the churches could increase their membership at least by 20 or 30 percent by welcoming, openly, publicly welcoming the mentally ill and their families to in the congregations. The church has been a, uh, a large cause of the problems that we have surrounding mental illness. And I think that it's time that the church became a part of the solution. One of the points we tried to make in our report was that mental disorders are physical disorders. You know, the, if you look at the research of the last 30 years, there are changes in the brain that are accompanying mental, change, mental disorders. We know now more about that than we knew in December of 1999. You can see changes in the brains that occur with mental disorders. And I think sometimes our, our religious leaders believe that people who are, mental, who, are, who are suffering from a mental disorder just don't have strong enough faith. And if they could just correct that, they would be fine. There's some families that believe that, that it's a character weakness, it's a spiritual weakness. I have heard of and know of some congregations that will even try to hold an exorcism and help um, get rid of a, an evil spirit in a person who is mentally ill. Um, and of course for the person themselves to feel that this is a sin or an evil it can be devastating because instead of wanting to work towards health and wholeness and recovery, they're busy blaming themselves. We don't uh, accept this truly as an illness, whereas we've accepted other illnesses. It's okay to have AIDS. It's okay to have diabetes. It's okay to have heart trouble. I know my own brother, last time uh, he went in the hospital when he was um, uh, in a psychotic episode, he did not want to tell me that he has schizophrenia. He'd rather tell me that he was on crack. It was just more readily acceptable than you to be termed someone that is mentally ill or as some people still try to say crazy or insane, which are words that are outmoded, outdated, but still people are using those terms and they're, they're degrading. The person that suffers from a mental illness loses all their friends. Uh, and eventually the uh, friends of the families. For me, the most difficult part, what I felt the most in my depression was the feeling of disconnection. And that is so difficult to bridge that gap and to find ways to feel connected back to the world again. And that's where we need other people. That's why we need the churches and the faith communities to be supportive. It hurts me a lot that my family had to suffer in silence, that they had to struggle too. Not only was I keeping silent, but my family was keeping silent. It hurts me a lot that they did not get the support and care that they needed at a time that was very difficult for all of us. It hurts me that the church was not there in many ways and continues to not be there for many others. I gave a workshop last October and uh, I had not one clergy person from the diocese attended. It's not high on their radar. Congregations aren't in inclined to be thinking about people's mental health and emotional state. I'm working hard. The Commission on Mental Illness of the Diocese is working hard trying to get our seminary to teach something about mental illness. We teach about alcoholism. We have for 20 or 30 years, but uh, they're very resistant. Families often confide in ministers when they have problems. It's very important for people who are trained to be ministers are trained to recognize mental disorders as early as possible, but also are trained to know that there is a network, if you will, in which one can, can get quality care. The, the clergy control the agendas of the worship service. And until we can educate them, uh, not too much is going to happen. Well, if you look out on a congregation on a Sunday morning, you will know that one in four families, according to the Surgeon General's report, has a member struggling with a mental illness. And that is extremely high. And it's something, unfortunately, that many, most of our churches do not address. and. Consequently, many of our parishioners are also struggling in silence. Something as simple as mentioning persons with mental illness, lifting them up in a pastoral prayer, 
will have a huge significance on the number of phone calls the pastor may get this, the next day. But it's really making it okay to talk about mental illness in the church. I think that we need to offer people opportunities and places to tell their stories, to listen compassionately, try not to provide instant solutions for people, but to walk with them. There is something about being able to have someone listen to you and to listen with a listening ear and not give advice. There's a model of an interfaith group where people coming out of a halfway house or hospitals, they ask to go to a particular denomination. And it started off with all they did was offer rides to a church. But when people came to the church and all of a sudden other things began to happen and they realized that this us and them broke down, those barriers broke down. Within the last year, I received a call from a pastor and a member of his church who happens to also be served by Hope Haven, hadn't been at church for a while and he was concerned about that person. And what we discovered is because of some changes in a, in a group home's composition and schedule, he had been going to church with someone else. He was missed. That pastor missed him. And the pastor told me, he said, you know, when I stand in front of my congregation, I look for this particular person because when he's there, I know that the body's full. So I asked the pastor to uh, get in touch with the staff at that group home and express those concerns to them. They not realizing how important that person was to the congregation immediately shifted their schedules so that person was in his church with his pastor and part of his family and his body. That is in relationships in persons that we experience the presence of God and the ministry of presence to another person is the biggest gift that can be given. People in this congregation are accepted for who they are and they're invited to participate in the congregation as they can and have uh, talent and interest. There are about uh, 10 individuals who struggle with various kinds of uh, serious mental issues, 10 out of about 60. There hasn't been any kind of support group mechanism or a special topic study that I'm aware of in the congregation to address these issues. But we know each other. It's a rather small congregation, and, and people know each other and accept each other as, as family, really brothers and sisters in the family of God. Persons with a mental illness have the same hopes, dreams as, as anyone else, and that faith communities need to celebrate who they are and embrace them and include them, be inclusive of them in the congregation. Congregations need to make some sort of a commitment to do this kind of ministry, and that can be difficult for many congregations. Retraining our our ushers and greeters to be accepting, maybe some education and understanding if somebody maybe acts a little different in during the service and how that's going to be handled. Um, we had a wonderful model of a young man who had lots of issues and was partnered with a, a little child, five-year-old child in a Sunday school class and saw himself as his helper, as his guide and it became an enriching experience for, for both of those persons. Another really important component is support, and this also needs to come through the pastor, it needs to come through the congregation. One of the things that we started at our church was a counseling center. We had support groups led by professionals. We also had a one-on-one -on -one mentoring program where we partnered up persons who had been trained to be a friend, a listening ear, to walk that journey with a person with a mental illness or their families or other difficult times as well. And then for the churches that are ready to do so, there's advocacy. And that means informing congregations about impending legislation having to do with mental health issues. In our culture, Mental illness is such a stigma. We need to learn to erase that perception from Christian people, from any kind of a spiritual community or a faith community, 
and understand that this is just a reality of our lives and we need to learn to deal with it in healthy ways.